So if you have a problem with a old appliance with a standing pilot light in it and the light is not staying lit, or even if you do manage to get it lit after cleaning out the thermocouple in there like some videos suggest you do. If it were my boiler, I would just replace it anyway. Home Depot, they sell a universal White Rogers thermocouple for like $7.95. The job only takes a few minutes and it's not that hard to do. Eight bucks permanent fix and you're done. So let's get started. So regardless of what you're working on, boiler furnace, water heater, fireplace, you're going to want to shut the gas cock off or at least shut off the gas valve itself. Um, if you're going to be doing this on a boiler or a furnace, you want to shut the power off at the burner switch. Um, we're not going to be diving into any electrical or gas connections here, but it's always a good idea to shut that stuff off before you stick your hands in appliance, obviously. Now on a boiler or furnace, you're going to have a little fire plate that kind of sits right on top of the burners. Usually it's just two screws you loosen up and you lift it right out. On a water heater, um, it's a little more involved. It's probably four or five screws um, and you pull out the whole burner assembly in that case. Okay, so on a boiler, you're going to have a long burner tube like this with your pilot assembly on it. Um, and inside these boilers and furnaces, they usually sit in the back side on a slot like this. And you just need to lift it right out of that slot and you're able to remove the whole burner and kind of pull it out towards you. Now, when you do this, you want to be careful because you have an aluminum tube here next to your thermocouple. That's your thermocouple right there. This aluminum tube is the gas supply for your pilot light. So you want to be careful when you're doing this on a boiler, furnace, water heater, doesn't matter. You don't want to kink that because um, that will obviously cut off your gas supply to your pilot light. Now to remove the thermocouple, sometimes you might just need like a small adjustable wrench like this. Sometimes you might not even need that much. Uh, it depends on the kind of design that's in there. But on this particular one, I have to actually unscrew the, uh, the thermocouple down here. But on some of them, you might just have something like this. You see there's a little clip there that kind of holds the thermopile in place. Um, and you don't necessarily have to unscrew it at the bottom here. Uh, you can actually reuse that piece, especially if you're having a hard time getting it off. That clip just holds the thermocouple in place and all you really need to do is slide it right out. And that's the clip there that holds it in. So if you're having issues uh, loosening that up because it's in there way too tight, uh, you can reuse it and leave it in there. It comes with another piece that you can reuse. In this particular case, on this one, you actually have to take it off because you can see it's a little bit of a different design. So you can see how these thermocouples are a little different, but the universal one will fit in this application. Um, you just have that nut there that I told you if you had a hard time removing it. But if you have a style like this, you will need to remove that to get these out. Here is our new universal thermocouple, $7.95. Um, you can see we have that piece in there I was talking about. We also have a little clip in there that slides over the thermocouple. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. In the case of the old one where we left that part in there, we can just go ahead and want to take that clip off. You want to go ahead and you can just slide it back in and you slide the clip right over the top of the thermocouple. Make sure it's all the way down and you want to make sure your thermocouple will be engulfed in the flame when you get this back in. So you want to make sure it's in the right position. In the event you do need to uh, use this because of this older style thermocouple here. If you do need to remove it, you can reuse the piece that comes with the universal replacement. And you just screw that into the bracket. Slide your thermocouple in below it. And you just slide your clip over the top and that's it you're basically done right here so once you set your burner back in place now we have to make the connection at the other end of the gas valve so here you have your aluminum tube coming into your gas valve and that is the gas supply for your pilot light and you have your copper tube coming in on the other side of the gas valve here and that's where your thermocouple gets connected so all you're going to need to do is take a small adjustable wrench take this part off the gas valve you loosen it up and it shouldn't be in there tight usually uh, it should only be in there hand tight and maybe a quarter inch turn with a wrench but once you get that out 
And now here we have the other end of our thermocouple here. We have this piece that goes into the gas valve itself. That's where the electrical connection is made when the thermocouple generates the DC voltage. And we just go ahead and screw it back in. And you want to make sure it's that piece is sitting all the way down and making contact when you tighten it up. And that's it, you're done. Now you're ready to throw your burner back in, put everything back together and go ahead and turn your gas on, turn your valve on for your gas shutoff and relight it. So the relighting procedure is pretty straightforward. You want to put your gas valve into the pilot position. All right, this is your pilot here. Once you have it in the pilot position, you want to hold down this button. What that does is it closes a solenoid that allows gas to flow through your tube to your pilot light. And the thermocouple's job is to detect a flame there. When that flame is detected, um, it will send a millivolt signal that will eventually hold this solenoid down for you. So you have to hold the solenoid down, feed gas, light your pilot while you're holding this down. And after about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, maybe a minute, you can actually let go and your pilot light should stay lit, at which point you can then put your gas valve to the on position and you're ready to go. If your power is back on, you can go ahead and put on a call for heat and it should fire up. Now, I often recommend OEM parts whenever you're replacing stuff, but when we're talking about standing pilot appliances, you're probably way past that warranty period. So issues like having a professional do it or having an OEM part in there, we're not risking voiding warranties or anything like that. So in this case, it does make sense just to buy the cheap part. If you can do it yourself for seven, eight bucks, why not? So even if cleaning off the thermocouple works, uh, you can see a repair like this is really not all that involved. It's pretty cheap and you know, a couple weeks down the road, you're not up three o'clock in the morning on a 15 degree night in your jammies, on your knees, cleaning it yet again. This is a one-time repair. You're probably done with it. This thing will probably be on the scrap heap before you ever have to do it again. I'm Jersey Mike. Thanks for watching.